So the idea for Burrow came about when my co-founder Kabir and I moved to Philadelphia to start business school at Wharton. We had to buy furniture, and for us, couches were the biggest pain points for us. Kabir had gone to West Elm, uh, picked out a medium gray, very standard colored couch, but was told he'd have to wait 12 weeks to receive the couch. He said, that's crazy. I, I'm in business school for a year and a half. I'm not gonna wait three months for a couch. What do you have in stock? They happen to have like a red, orange colored couch in stock. And he was like, okay, fine, I'll take that. Um, they told them that couch would take two weeks to ship and cost $250 for shipping, plus another $100 for white glove delivery if you wanted that. Um, so to avoid waiting and paying, Kabir got a little cart from his building and wheeled the sofa home on the sidewalk himself. Um, one night in the beginning of business school, he was telling me that story, and I told him about my experience buying a sofa, which had been going to Ikea, spending $600 on something that uh, ultimately wasn't that nice and required me spending two and a half hours on my floor with an Allen key putting it together. You know, in, in this day and age, there are companies that are trying to commercialize space travel, but when you want to buy a sofa, it's a really painful experience. And customers are pretty much stuck with two different options. Buying heavy, expensive furniture that takes a long time to ship and is really inconvenient to move, or they buy cheap, flimsy, disposable furniture um, that doesn't last the move when they, when they do want to move it again. And so in either case, customers are kind of left with a, a pretty poor experience and they have to sacrifice on quality, comfort, convenience, style, price, one of those things. Um, and so we set out to create a new experience with a better product that, that wouldn't require people to sacrifice. And the way we went about doing that um, was by essentially reverse engineering a high quality sofa to ship in compact boxes. Um, and doing that allowed us to cut out over 70% of shipping costs and shipping times. Um, and create a better experience for customers. Y Combinator for us was a proof of concept that we had an idea that was worth pursuing. Um, so getting accepted into Y Combinator was really a big boost of confidence for us at that point in time when we just had a pitch deck. Um, actually going through Y Combinator was a bit of a forcing function. Companies at Y Combinator end up being students of the Lean Startup Method. And so they are encouraged to try things fast, fail fast, learn fast, and then make adjustments even quicker, and then you repeat that process. Um, and that was a good forcing function for us to uh, get early traction and learn from our customers, and it, it, it made us grow faster. We faced just about every challenge that you could face early on at Burrow. Um, we had delays in, on the supply chain side, ordering parts and materials, um, we had delays in shipping or actual production of products. We had delays in shipping products. Um, a lot of these challenges come from, you know, neither Kabir nor myself had a background in furniture. Um, and existing furniture players didn't really want to work with us because uh, we were young, we didn't really get the idea. Um, and so we were kind of on our own to figure these things out. And, uh, when you're dealing with an international supply chain and, and manufacturing physical goods, um, there's a lot that can go wrong. Um, and, and you know what you learn is that there are certain things that are in your control, um, planning ahead, project management, checking in with, with, with all your suppliers and partners and vendors um, all the time, basically micromanaging what you, what you want to get done so that you learn earlier when problems are coming. You can earlier figure out a, a solution to problems um, and, then, and then plan accordingly and communicate to people. Um, but you also learn there's some things you just can't control. Um, and you know, so if you're a manufacturer in China of a very specific part that you need, a component that you need to build your product, uh, is gonna be delayed by a month. You learn that there's nothing you can do other than just communicate to your customers um, proactively and, and, and let them know and, and, and kind of deal with the consequences. And so um, I think it helps with your sanity to understand uh, what you can and cannot control and then you know focusing your efforts on those elements that you can control. The best part about Burrow is talking to customers who tell us a story about how we have, we have solved the problem and it's the same problem that we set out to solve in the beginning. So 
they have struggled with finding a nice sofa that will fit into their apartment. We can provide them that and when we get that feedback, it's so rewarding. Um, I love when people tell us how much they love the comfort of our sofas, how much they love the style, the design, um, any aspect that was an intentional thing that we put a lot of thought and effort into um, to improve people's lives and then they tell us about how much that's impacted their lives in a positive way. Um, that's, that's probably the best part about, about Burrow. My advice to entrepreneurs is that details matter. Um, you can do all the planning in the world and it won't be right, and, and that's okay, but the details that go into that plan do matter. Early on in your company's life, a lot of those details will be assumptions, and those assumptions will oftentimes be wrong. But what happens over time is when you get to a very granular level of detail and everything that you do, you start to be able to measure how close you were and you can calibrate every single, recalibrate every single step of the way. And so then fast forward a year from now, suddenly you're incredibly good at predicting all of those little details and that'll help in everything that you do.